It's been a cloudy and rainy day in Toronto, Ontario, but you, as you can see by the war of the words, the fans' enthusiasm is not dampened in the least as they file into Maple Leaf Gardens for Game 2 of the Campbell Conference Finals between the Los Angeles Kings and the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Leafs lead the series one game to none. And a pleasant good evening to you, everyone. I'm Tom Meese. Doug Gilmore had a great night on the ice in game one at Maple Leaf Gardens, but everything in the newspapers and all the people have been able to talk about was the fighting that went on in the last two and a half minutes of play. Where the, all the animosity between the Leafs and the Kings, where is it rooted? Well, maybe it's rooted back in a game at the Great Western Forum way back November 21st of 1992. Thomas Sandstrom in the highlight there. He of the L.A. Kings. Doug Gilmore, number 93 in blue and white, slashes Sandstrom's left arm, breaking that arm. Sandstrom missed a total of 23 games. So who knows? Maybe that's where all the animosity started and overflowed at the end of game one here at Maple Leaf Gardens. I'm joined, as always, by John Davidson. The cruel truth for Los Angeles, John. They're down one game to none. What do they have to do to even things up tonight? Well, first of all, I think both teams will have to try and control their emotions. It's kind of been like a car accident where there's a fuel spill, and it's scary. Everybody's on edge because one spark and that fuel could ignite. There could be just a huge explosion, and who knows what could happen. I think both teams will try and play it smart for the most part, but I do believe Los Angeles Angels has to use their team speed. They feel that they did not do the things that they did so well in the series before in beating Vancouver. They fell into Toronto's trap as the game moved along. Toronto's a bigger team, took the body, and Los Angeles paid for it. And, of course, Gilmore was fabulous. Some quick words about Doug Gilmore, who had two goals and two assists in game one. Did it all. He penalty killed. He scored. He set up the passing plays. He took the body. He also threw the big check that started the game itself right here. That started the emotions going in the building. The fans got into it. The lead players got into it. It knocked Los Angeles off kilter. He even took the body on Gretzky, causing a turnover. He did scoring. He got a couple of goals in the game. He's 165 pounds, yet he's a complete package. He is the key to Toronto's fortunes. There's a big mystery surrounding this game number two. What kind of game will we have? Will we have the great kind of up and down end-to-end -end action we had in the first two and a half periods of game one? Or will we have what we had late in game one? A lot of fisticuffs and emotions. We'll find out in just a few moments. Now, you can own the definitive documentary on The King, a production as hard-driving as the man himself, Richard Petty, the legend. This limited edition two-volume home video includes the official Petty Collector's Car, and if you order now, you'll receive this free commemorative poster. To order, call 1-800-547-4343 or send $38.95 plus $5 shipping and handling to Richard Petty, the legend, 805B Franklin Court, Marietta, Georgia, 30067. Hi, I'm Jim Palmer. Thinking about refinancing your home? Even if you've been late on some payments in the past, you can still refinance your first mortgage and get today's low rates at the Money Store. Because the Money Store looks at your total credit picture. They won't automatically disqualify you for some late payments. And you can apply by phone with no application fee. So even if you've been late on some payments, you can still refinance your first mortgage. Call the Money Store at 1-800-879-9768. Tomorrow, the NHL is playing for keeps. The Wales Conference Championship continues tomorrow night live on ESPN. The Stanley Cup Playoffs. The magic of the 93 Stanley Cup Playoffs is yours forever with this power pack video. You'll cheer the overtime victories, last-second dramas, and hockey star-studded performances. You'll find all the spectacular players and plays in the official 93 Stanley Cup video. To order for $19.95 plus $4 shipping, use your credit card and call 1-800-688-1993. That's 1-800-688-1993. Welcome back once again to National Hockey Night here at ESPN. John Saunders along with Jim Schoenfeld. We'll get you out to Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto in just a moment. The Maple Leafs and the Kings, game two of the Campbell Conference. Very interesting game number one. In the first two periods, the Kings were right with them. The shots were about the same. Third period, it's like L.A. forgot to show up. Well, Pat Burns has been singing the praises, praises of the Leafs' superior conditioning, and it seemed almost prophetic because in the third period, they completely dominated the L.A. Kings, outshooting them 22 to 1. Even in even-numbered situations, you'll see here, we have a three-on-three. -three. Kings and Leafs, the Leafs dominated. Felino, Krzyzewski, and John Cullen winning all the one-on-one -on -one battles. 
speed, intensity, and just sheer hard work, out muscling, out hustling the Kings, beating them to loose pucks. Kershelinski walking out with the pick, and that was typical of the entire third period. The Kings were supposed to be the team that was quick, the team to be worried about on the counter, but it's the least countering here, a three-on-three. Borchevsky with speed to the outside, and Healy has to make a big save. Luke Robitaille is going to try his hand, but all it is is another rush broken up by the Leaf defenders. Three, four Leafs back, five Leafs back. Now they're on the attack. It stopped momentarily, but not for long. And here the Leafs go again, outnumbered. It's a two on three. There's the one on one. Anderson by Huddy. And another big save by Kelly Rudy as the Leafs totally dominated. So the big question is, are the Toronto Maple Leafs that good or are the Kings that bad? I think the Kings are going to have a stronger game from beginning to end tonight than they did in game one. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Now, you mentioned John Cullen for the Toronto Maple Leafs. He will be unavailable tonight in game number one. He sustained a neck injury, but he's not the only one hurting. The Los Angeles Kings have several players who are nursing injuries. Alexei Zitnik, Gilmer, Gilmore rather, knocked him down early in the game. He will play. Yari Curry has a wrist injury. He will play. And Warren Reichel, he was injured against Vancouver and missed game one against the Toronto Maple Leafs with a knee injury. He is on the ice and will be available to play. But still, Jim, they're on the ice. They can play, but are they 100%? How much do the injuries affect you? Well, they certainly need especially a guy like Warren Reichel. He has been a major part of the Kings' success in the playoff series. Right now, he is third on the Kings in scoring. Six goals, six assists. Not too amazing, except that in 70 regular season games, he had six goals and seven assists. This is a guy that likes to hit. He's a good skater. He's a little bit gimpy with his knees, so we'll see if that affects his game. But he likes to hit, so he causes a lot of turnovers, and he is an offensive spark that the Kings welcome back into the lineup. All right, it's the Los Angeles Kings and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Game number two of the Campbell Conference Final. Which team will be headed to the Stanley Cup round? Well, Doug Gilmore against Alexei Zitnik. He laid him out early. That set the tone. The Leafs won game one. Game two straight ahead. And they're kind of a club that if they're tied or up one goal, they're maybe one of the best teams in hockey, uh, the style they play. It's really imperative that if we can get ahead, you know, one goal, two goals, try to make them open it up a little bit. Good defense beating good offense. Is that the case here? Well, I agree with Wayne that it's important that the Kings get the lead, but it's not just defense. I mean, the Leafs are the best team in the league at playing with the lead, but they don't lay back. They continue to attack. They clog up the neutral zone. And for the Kings, if they get behind, they have to open up the game. When you open up, you have three on twos, two on ones against, and the Kings are not a good team outnumbered in their own zone. All right, sit back, relax, enjoy the first period. We'll see you between periods. Right now, let's go out to Tom and John in Toronto. Thank you very much, John Saunders, and welcome to Oracle's Maple Leaf Garden. Sign of game two of the Campbell Conference Finals. Let's get right to it. The men in net tonight. The men that will feel the pressure, the shots from the point and on the doorstep. For the Los Angeles Kings, the veteran Kelly Rudy, who played well despite the fact that the Maple Leafs scored four goals on him in game number one as a five and four record for the playoffs. The goals against a little bit high, but he's kind of erratic. When he's hot, he's very hot. When he's not, he's not. He's been hot the last three games he's played, though, and this young man has been hot all playoffs long. That's Felix Potvin, of course, the 21-year-old rookie. Goals against the 2.65 and an excellent save percentage. The referee tonight, Don Koharski. He drops the puck and we're underway. First time in three games that Pat Burns does not start. Doug Gilmore at center ice. Instead, some of the big boys. We may see some grinding here during this first shift. Charlie Honey with a loose puck at center. Dumps it into the leaf zone. Dave Taylor tries for it, but Dave Ellett is on top of it for Toronto. The Kruszewski line for Toronto, the Conacher line open for L.A. Here's Taylor, though, to Reichel. Back to Conacher. Conacher had the lone goal in game one for Los Angeles. Is quickly bumped off the puck. Wendell Clark, cross ice to Foligno. Kruszewski with Sibrun. Kruszewski, and he's wide to the stick side. Mike Kruszewski, and there's going to be a penalty called by referee Don Koharski. Uh, the Los Angeles King. Don Kaharski makes the first penalty call. It goes against Los Angeles. A high sticking call. I believe was back behind the play. And it may be either Conacher or Reichel. I think Reichel who's been inserted yeah. back into the lineup. You know there wasn't many times during the regular season that Reichel in all his penalty minutes that he hurt his own team. But here taking a penalty early doesn't help. There he is cutting through the middle. The stick is up. Over the left side, ooh, right there, he catches Gill right in the face with the blade of his stick. And that's a bad penalty to take when your team is down a game and you're on the road. 
That's an offensive zone penalty away from the puck and a careless use of the stick, and that has an opportunity or a chance to hurt Barry Melrose and his hockey club. Now, the power play percentage for Toronto, 16.9% for the playoffs. Uh, the Leafs were 0 for 4 with the extra man in the first game against the Los Angeles Kings. And there you see the Toronto power play in the regular season and during the playoffs. But so far in the series with L.A., 0 for 4. In fact, L.A. was also 0 for 3 on the power play against Toronto. For the playoffs, the Kings killing them off at over 76%, slightly less than they did during the regular season. Pat Conacher, the centerman for Los Angeles here, does a little stretching before he moves in for the faceoff. You see him stretching again. He has a groin problem. Injured in game one of this series. Did not skate yesterday, did not skate this morning, but says he's okay and ready to go. He's one tough guy. He took the faceoff, won it. The puck's moved down. He goes to the bench, and Gretzky steps on. Conacher got the job done. It's Gill and Miranoff, along with Borchewski and Doug Gilmore and Dave Andrichuk. I should say, yes, Andrew Chuck, that's the power play unit for Toronto. Play is onside. Gil moves in. The rebound, and Rudy has to help cover it up. It's loose, though, to Miranoff. He lobs it in front, and Kelly Rudy has to make a glove save. So pressure early on. Three shots right away on Kelly Rudy. The first one, I don't think he saw the shot much, but he had a perfect angle on the shot by Gil. You'll see the Leafs try to score on the rush. Beautiful pass across. Now you'll see Gill move into the forehand side. First shot, Rudy has it hit him. The re big rebound. The second shot, Borshevsky was robbed. And then another point shot as the last shot, Kelly Rudy hangs on to it. This is one rebound that gets away from Kelly Rudy, but it's understandable early in the game. The second one gets away, and the Kings didn't clear it out of the zone. First three shots go to Toronto, and Kelly Rudy looks sharp. Paniker won the faceoff, and Marty McSurley, who's public enemy number one here in Toronto, and probably over English-speaking Canada at this point, <laughs> lofted it down the ice. Because he had a big fight with Wendell Clark in game number one. Todd Gill inside the blue line. Miranoff, one-timer, and the stick save the rebound. Oh, somehow it didn't get by Rudy. I don't know how, John. The big first save was made. I believe the puck was deflected. A good shot by Miranoff. Remember, he's a defenseman number 15 for Toronto, who primarily primarily plays in the power play for the shot. Nikolai Borshevsky, the Russian rookie for Toronto, around the boards. Miranoff couldn't hold it in. Gretzky bumps Miranoff down. Wayne Gretzky didn't know where the puck was. Dave Andrichuk knows where it is. He's got Gretzky poke checking him from behind. The play is in on side. And Dave Ellett, poke check by Gretzky. Here come the Kings. Gretzky and Curry, two on three. Gretzky, Ellett controls his stick. The fans love it. Wayne Gretzky not exactly being applauded either in this building. Even though he's a Toronto area native. Here's Gilmore in front. He scores! going to have one stop inside the zone, inside the Toronto zone. You want me to use it, Tommy? But you'll see the Toronto Maple Leafs score on the rush as you'll see the puck is deep and Gretzky gets beaten away for the puck. And right away, you'll see Toronto head up ice. A brilliant play with some crisscrossing inside the zone. We stop it here. You'll see Gilmore continue to go, but both of these kings will go over to this man. And now you'll see the puck go back. Man, bad defensive play by Los Angeles in the zone. Gilmore scores. It's a power play goal, and Reichel took the bad penalty in the offensive zone. Goal by Doug Gilmore, his third in two games against the Los Angeles Kings for the playoffs leading score at 2 minutes and 25 seconds. It is a 1-0 lead for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and just what Wayne Gretzky said shouldn't happen or couldn't happen to his team has happened, John. Well, you take an offensive zone penalty like that, Tom, you're absolutely right. It's a problem. And Toronto took advantage of it. Tony Granato in behind the Toronto net, so the Kings forced to play catch up again. Charlie Huddy with it, lost it in. Rebound! Donnelly scores! And we're tied at one. Mike Donnelly and the L.A. Kings. The L.A. Kings, this line for Los Angeles had a brilliant second period, centered by Corey Millen. With Granado on one side and Donnelly on the other, and this just quietens the building right down. Look at the aggressive forecheck by the men in the dark jerseys. Charlie Huddy, the defenseman, moves in brilliantly. Now you'll see the puck get put in front, and you see Donnelly score. Not one king stood still. 
Watch all the black jerseys moving around. My! This is a team built on speed because they're not that big. And when they show the movement like that in the offensive zone, they'll have success. We're tied at one. 31 seconds after Gilmore set this place on fire emotionally. Mike Donnelly quiets the building, tying the game at one. So we're going to have offensive fireworks tonight. You're going to have to hang around to find that out. As we look at the playoffs leading score, Doug Gilmore, the great number 93 at Toronto, scored the first goal of the night. 16.52 left in the first period. It's Los Angeles 1 and Toronto 1. <laughs> How do you order Miller Genuine Draft Light? The cold filtered light with smooth draft taste during the big game? Say MGD Light and say no more. The weapons are deadlier. The romance is sweeter. The passion is hotter. He's me like you've never kissed me before. And the explosions are bigger. Keeps going and going. Hot shot part due. Drama! Me! Rated PG-13. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. How do you order Miller Genuine Draft Light? The cold filtered light with smooth draft taste at a fern bar? You don't. MGD Light is far too cool for a fern bar. Say MGD Light and say no more. Welcome back to Toronto, everyone. We've had a quick start to this game with John Davidson. I'm Tom Mees. We're tied, as you see, at one. Gilmore from Borshevsky and Andrew Chuck at 235. Then at 256, Donnelly from Huddy and Granada. We're tied at one. Thomas Anstrom with his first shift for Los Angeles. He didn't play much in game one. His coach didn't think he was into the game early, so he didn't play much. This is his first shift, and he's got to prove to his coach that he's willing to play a hard game. And he just moved into Wendell Clark, knocked him off the puck. It'll be interesting to see what happens here. Mm, Alexei Shinnick, it'll be interesting to see his mobility tonight after that collision with Gilmore. Here's a shot just wide from Glenn Anderson as Gilmore set him up. Well, the puck's flying fast and furious by the goaltenders tonight. The kind of game John Davidson used to love. <laughs> Thomas Sandstrom has it deflected in the corner. And here's Wendell Clark for the Leafs. Clark gaining speed. He's got Gilmore on the left wing. Wendell Clark tries to get around Tim Waters. Setting up Anderson. He scores! Again, Los Angeles victimizes them themselves with just terrible defensive zone coverage. Wendell Clark with a brilliant start to the game. Watch him carry the puck through the zone, back everybody up. Now watch the black jerseys. Instead of playing man on man, they end up with two men going to one. Right here, almost three to one. Two white jerseys wide open, and Glenn Anderson just goes to the net. Kelly Rudy with no chance. Beautiful pass across. Wendell Clark was like the magnet. He drew everyone to him, fed Glenn Anderson, and Glenn Anderson, when he's in tight like that, with that kind of room, you can see why he has 85 career playoff goals. Bad, bad, bad defensive play, and you can't say it any politer than that. Well, you can, you can say it worse, though. It was terrible. Glenn Anderson, his fourth goal of the playoffs. They go with nine assists, 13 points now, the postseason for the former Edmonton Oiler, Grave who has had an up-and-down season here in Toronto. It's Anderson from uh, Clark and Jamie McCown at 3 minutes 59 seconds. So in the span of 1 minute and 24 seconds, three goals have found the net here at Maple Leaf Garden. You know, you, you, you think about Toronto moving out of their zone. They're on a play here where they want to fight through the neutral zone. They want to get into the offensive zone. They do that. Now, we just stop for a second. You see, Sandstrom's got to pick this man up. We have this and we have this. But now you're going to see Anderson, who Sandstrom should be on. Boom! One quick pass and he's wide open. Now, that's just not using your head. It's not being smart in your own zone. And it costs your team a goal. Gary Shuchok controlled the faceoff, then went down like a ton of bricks at center ice and is skating over to the L.A. bench. Puck is loose now in the Toronto zone. Hot down leaves it for Dave Ellett. 
Luke Robitaille is on for his first shift of the night. Robitaille is another man, a 63-goal scorer in the regular season, not one shot in game number one. They say the reason for that is he's nervous. He gets all up tight. He plays his best hockey when he's put loose and fancy free, and the coaches, frankly, didn't know, John, which Robitaille would show up tonight. They need John Candy to spend a little time with him before yeah. the game, huh? You don't loosen up with him, you, you'll never loosen up. <laughs> Bill Berg and Robitaille, five four in the corner. Charlie Huddy pinching in, the puck comes loose to center. Nari Curry just turned 33 yesterday after Huddy at center ice. Alec Robitaille by for it. Granado trying to get loose. It's a loose puck. Granado gets it in. Oh, he just missed connection with Millen. Nick Sorley. Boy, if he scores the goal, it's going to be an interesting reaction in this place. Puck in the corner. Robitaille, Alec Krusilinski. Now the Kings Millen in front just couldn't get a stick on it. Los Angeles putting on some good pressure of their own in the Toronto zone. This is something they're making a conscious effort to do tonight. Robitaille with a long shift. Now, Donnelly gets on with his regular line mates, Millen and Granado. It's a very fast line. Toronto touches. It'll be offside, so they let the Kings clear the zone. Waters and Andrichuk fighting at the center ice red line for possession. Krusinski gets it. He's got Borshevsky with him. They're onside. Borshevsky trying to get around McSorley. Krusinski centering pass. He's blocked. Now he gets it back. Now it's blocked again. Little Corey Millen trying to bump off big Krusinski, but Borshevsky has it. Borshevsky in front. The save, and Rudy has to cover up with an even 14 minutes to go in the first period. You can understand why Borshevsky is on the ice with Krusinski and Andrichuk. It's like the Twin Towers standing beside the the player Borshevsky and he was a recipient of all these big guys running each other and he just darted in the smallest player and got the scoring chance. Millen works hard here as Krusilniski out muscles him. Finally he holds up now Borshevsky as again <laughs> Krusilniski grabs a hold of McSorley and Borshevsky is able to skate in with the scoring chance. Los Angeles has to re react a lot smarter in their own zone. Now they've been pretty good in the offensive zone except for the puck rolling as you see there over the stick of Corey Millen as Felix Potman moves across. Shots are 7-3 in favor of Toronto. 2-1 is the score in favor of Toronto. Two little used players Jimmy Carson of the Kings and Mike Eastwood of the Leafs. Five for the faceoff and Eastwood controls. Manderville can't control. However the puck is kept in by Rouse. Alexey Shitnik behind his own net. Rugged Soviet or rather Russian rookie defenseman up there Carson. Keep saying Soviet. It's hard to get out of that habit. Bellino's with it. Centering pass for Eastwood doesn't connect. Leafs send it in offside, so Rudy won't have any opposition to play it. Kings just do clear the zone. This is Conacher with it. He's got Carson and Blake. Conacher down the middle. Conacher in the same putt back. Robbie Blake controls. Puck man. Here comes a rebound. But Manderville is on it for Toronto and clears the zone. Great play in the neutral zone by Connor Curry. Nuck. Eastwood down. Grabbed the puck. Moved up ice and had the scoring shot. That is a tremendous effort by a player who's had problems with a groin. When I look at Zindek, I'm sorry, Tom. He looks to be okay with the leg. There's Conacher. He's already knocked down his man to take the puck away from him. Now it's a three on two. The defenseman spread somewhat thinking pass. Conacher changes gears and Pop Van, who drops down early, had the low shot. I think the Kings, when they see that, they're going to want to see the shot go up high. Look at, look at, oh, it's Vanderbilt, pardon me. And there's Conacher out muscling him. Now watch the defenseman spread, left and right. Change of gear, right there. Conacher turns it on. Now he doesn't see the goaltender go down. He's also hooked. But I think the Kings are going to try to shoot high on Pop Van this game. That was the plan. From what I've seen so far tonight, John, the Kings are playing their up and down game when they do that they give scoring chances and Toronto's taken advantage but Los Angeles apparently said hey this is the way we play best this is the way we win so we give up a few goals who cares and Toronto seems to be caught up in that up and down play a little bit we'll see if they can win playing that style if they can they're going to be very tough to beat in this series Sador touches up icing again the call on Toronto 12 minutes 44 seconds left to go in the first Leafs lead it by goal anyone there's a stoppage for an offside Barry Melrose a very positive thinker reads a couple of books all the time and goes back and looks at the books to try and get his positive way of thinking re 
reinforced. Now listen to this with chieftains, in other words, coaches, should understand that the only thing worse than losing a battle is failure to learn how to win the next one, Attila the Hunt. He reads these books. It's common sense, business sense, positive thinking. It's to do with Attila the Hunt, who calls chieftains and warriors and Huns his people. Chieftains are coaches, warriors are your best players, and Huns are the role players. He said, yeah, we learned. We learned what we did against Vancouver was a lot better in how to win than what we did against Toronto in game one, getting the puck deep, using our emotions better, smarter penalties. Well, they took the first penalty, and that was a bad one. Yeah. But it's a very interesting read, both of these books. Pat Riley, the Knickerbocker basketball coach, reinforces the book. And uh, this is common sense, how to run a business, and having the people in charge do the right thing for the people that work for you. Hot band forces a face off. 12.07 left in the first. Let's visit with John Saunders. Thank you, Tom. And time now for the Dodge playoff update. We'll take you back to last night in the Wales Conference. Stefan LeBeau takes the feed from Vincent Domfus, lets it go, beats Glenn Healy, and Montreal wins in double overtime, 4-3. They have a two games to nothing lead. The Islanders will try and get on track tomorrow at 7.30. You see it here. Tom and John. All right, John, thank you. Montreal now leads that series two games to none, but you're right, John, the next two games on the island where the Islanders have played very well of late. Toronto trying to take a 2 nothing lead in this series, leading the game 2-1. to one. It's a thrilling game. It was interesting yeah. to watch Pierre Turgeon play so well, even though every shift it was either Kirk Muller or Carboneau, the opposite center. He saw a lot of Desjardins, the defenseman, fine defenseman for Montreal. Those matchups, as you'll see that series move along, become interesting. Again, Potvin forces the face off. You know, another guy that Patrick Wall will see in his sleep is Benoit Hogue stepping in there with half the net to shoot at and missing the net on the shot. You can't do that. <laughs> you just can't do that. You're absolutely right. See, Peter Zenzel beats Curry. Curry with a bad hand. You wonder if that'll hurt him on faceoffs. And you see the interference play as Potvin held on for another draw. Curry, during game one of the series, won one faceoff, lost eight. He has a bad wrist. He missed part of the third period. Will it affect him on faceoffs? I think so. And Zezel, who uses a lot of power on draws, is the man going opposite Yari Curry right now. Zezel, the former flyer, former blue, tossed out of the circle or just taking a little skate around? Just taking a skate around. Getting, he's on in. getting lectured right now by Race Capanello. Curry taking some time off now, too. Sort of like batters stepping out of the box with just their helmet. Really no reason for it, but they do it a lot anyway. The Curry played to lose the draw. He told his teammates what to do if they lost the draw. Curry backed out. Both Robitai and Shuchuk went in. They didn't retain the puck. Los Angeles is so bad on faceoffs that they play and, and react to losing the draw. If they win the draw, it's a bonus. But that doesn't happen very often. Dave Ella races back in, and icing is the call of the L.A. Kings. So we've had a few icings back and forth here. 142 still to go for his period, 2-1 to one Toronto. It looked like Curry didn't even try on the draw, Tom. He just stood there when the puck is drawn back. Watch the two wingers dart in. Curry will back up. The two wingers dart in, but Dave Ella does a nice job holding up Shuchuk. And finally, you see the play that almost developed into a turnover. Nothing new. <laughs> Believe me. Now the Kings are used to that. Toronto is a very good face-off club. In fact, they won 85.5. No, pardon me. They did a great job in game one. Zezel went 17 and 6. Gilmore 18 and 8. Pretty good numbers. Not bad. Gilmore will take the face-off here with Corey Millen. And the Kings will end up controlling it. Zitnik off the board. Gill keeps it in. Todd Gill, his shot is blooded by Donnelly. Cross ice pass to Granato. Tony Granato's got some jets on his skates. Gets it to Zitnik. Nice play from behind by Andrichuk. Tying up Zitnik's stick. Oh, very nicely done by the long reach and the long arms of Dave Andrichuk. Gill in the corner for Toronto. Gilmore. Borshevsky takes a seat at center ice, and Zitnik sends it back in. Zitnik and Blake, the defense turning for Los Angeles because Gilmore is on the ice. And Millen was dumped by McCown, and Don Koharski thinks he dumped him a little bit too hard, and he's going to call a penalty. And maybe more. Tony Granato pushing and shoving. Donnelly nose to nose with Doug Gilmore. Gilmore just trying to shove Donnelly away and get out of there. But we do have the high-sticking call against Jamie McCowan happening. McCowan with a brilliant game one. He was on against Gretzky most of the night. He was plus three. There you see Tony Granato trying to work on Gilmore. Some interference on both sides. And then Granato trying to stay on side. Now you'll see the puck move around. 
Gilmore will be there. And there's the flying or sliding. Corey Millen. That's yeah. because Jamie McCowan used the stick on him. Well, there's the Doug Gilmore update. And uh, you can see he is having a fine, fine playoff. Only the only department he doesn't lead the league in a postseason, the goals. Ray Ferraro does with 13. Dave Andrichuk here in this game has 12. Great playoff series for Ray Ferraro. It's been fun to watch with the Islanders. Let's take a look, Chuck. Andrew Chuck was back checking, and Zitnik uses the slap shot. He doesn't have to here. It took too much time. There's Andrew Chuck with a brilliant play, back checking, and Putman didn't have a shot to deal with. Now the LA Kings go on the power play. They were 0 for 3 in this department in, uh, against Toronto in game number one. As you see McCown in the box, one of the reasons McCown might have drawn that penalty is that Corey Millen's only 5 7. Little guys uh, sometimes get the benefit of the doubt there. Well, he was overpowered by, by McCowan. Appeared to be away from the puck. Got cut. Roll the tie behind the net. Tied up by Zezel. Boy, Zezel's a good checker. Good defensive player. Zitnik inside the blue line. Hits the stick of Zezel. Zezel finally clear. Peter Zezel all over the ice. Bill Berg has it deflect off his skate. And some valuable seconds tick off the clock. If you're an L.A. Kings partisan. And also if you're at Toronto. All depends which way you look at it. Puck off the board. Zenzel keeps it in. Oh, shot locked it in front. Puck man. And it hits off uh, the blocker. And down the ice it goes with a minute 20 left to go. And the penalty to Toronto's McCown. Bobby Blake carries the center. Sends it in. King Gretzky's on the ice. The Kings, uh, though, allow the puck to exit the zone. And they carry it back in. Offside will be the call. National Hockey Night continues on ESPN. Don't forget, Friday night, game three of the series as we head westward, winging our way to Southern California tomorrow to bring you Friday's game three from the Great Western Forum. 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific time. It will be well worth staying up for. Los Angeles changes their number one unit. Gretzky line to the bench on the power play. And Corey Millen, who drew the penalty, his line comes right back on the ice. And I can sense that that man, Barry Melrose, the Kings head coach, says, listen, this line that he has on the ice now, uh, the best offensive line they've had going in this series. So it looks like even though there's a minute line left in the power play, he wants them on the ice to try and get some offense. Kings jumping in the Toronto zone. Millen goes back with it. Gilmore tries to clear. Sador, though, kept it in. Donnelly's in the slot. He's got one goal. Puck on the save. The rebound in front. A backhand shot, and Puck man covers up. The puck is loose, though. Around the corner, it's McSorley. 50 seconds left in the Kings' power play. And the rebound covered up by Felix the Cat. And a face-off in the Toronto zone. Now we saw three terrific saves by Felix the Cat. Pushing and shoving. The L.A. King defensemen stay out, so the face-off will remain inside the Toronto zone. Good, good move by Barry Melrose to get this small but effective forward line on the ice. This was the best save. This one, a snapshot up high. And even though there's a rebound, the Cat made the save. We saw two other shots get there. This one, where the puck is shoveled across, is a backhand shot. And the right leg will make the rebound save of putt man. Watch how we'll go to the right post, right here. Ah, the puck caught the outside of the net, even though Donnelly was right there. And then we'll see one more shot that was a point shot with congestion in front as the puck gets through. Potvin did a nice job dodging around bodies to watch the point shot from McSorley. 21-year-old Felix Potvin, born in Montreal, Quebec. Last played amateur hockey with Chicoutimi in the Quebec Major Junior League. Played four games for the Leafs last year with a trade of Grant Fuhrer, John. And it looks like he's going to fulfill the number one slot for a long, long time. And this is why they call him one of the reasons. They call him the king. And he's gotten quicker. He travels light, just like Felix. Two goals or less in nine of 15 playoff games. And he's 21 years of age. Mm. And they say you can only get better? <laughs> Lightning. McSorley at the point for Los Angeles. Kings still have 40 seconds to go in their man advantage. That's the seventh draw in the Toronto zone. Toronto's won all of them, even though the Kings did get puck possession for a moment. McSorley will dump it in. Daryl Sador is playing without his helmet. And it's icing on Los Angeles with the man advantage. So an error in judgment by the Kings with 23 seconds left on their power play. Tony Granado let the puck slide by. He thought it may have been an offside pass. And in turn, it ended up being icing. So face off all the way back to the Kings zone. See here, Marty McSorley. No, it wouldn't have been a two-line pass. 
He gained the blue line before he took the hit, a good hit from Peter Zessel. Sorley said today, Tom. Yeah, they think they saw some hitting in game one. Well, they ain't seen nothing yet. I'll be back and they'll know where to find me. Yeah, well, you can't miss Marty. There's Peter Zessel. McCown still in the box for 23 seconds. Gretzky getting set to take the face off. You will notice if you look closely at his chin that the goatee is gone. Gone. I said it. I thought I thought Janet liked it. He goes, yeah, but my dad didn't. Off it goes. <laughs> oh, That's my. Story. <laughs> now I know who the real boss is. Yeah. Gretzky's getting to spend some quality time with his dad, Walter, during his visit to his hometown area. Grew up in Brantford, Ontario, about 45 minutes away. Jindic with the shot. And Pat Van the save with Sandstrom on the doorstep. Oh, he has saved the day as L.A. has had some quality shots on this power play, John. You know, Jindic is a young 20-year-old defenseman who has wonderful skating legs. Even though this is a power play, he jumps in on the rush. And the cat was there again, not allowing a rebound. And that's become very normal. He really controls shots. You see the puck go wide, and then a little drop pass for the fourth man coming late. You see the shot, another slap shot, but a quicker release that time, and Pot Van made the save. Zidnik, I think, probably wanted to get the shot up even higher, much like LeBeau did last night to beat Glenn Healy for the winning goal in overtime. That was a four-man rush at the same time. Zidnik did not practice yesterday, did skate this morning. The knee was very, very sore yesterday after being upended by Doug Gilmore, a hip check that knocked him right up and over and did damage the knee. Four seconds left in the penalty to McCown, the face off in the leave zone. Kings control it back to Jindic. McCown just now stepping on the ice, so the teams are five aside, and the puck is shot into the Toronto player bench. Well, you're not even safe on the bench in this building. And as the penalty expires, Leafs still lead it two to one. Pat Burns had to duck there. And so did Peter Zessel sitting in the back row. A lot of speculation this morning at practice. As on Gilmore's line, for practice was Ken Bumgart, a rugged forward or defenseman, formerly actually played in Los Angeles, played for the Islanders for many years. And there was speculation that Pat Burns may dress him to be the watchdog for that guy, Doug Gilmore, in case Los Angeles tried to be physical. But once the game started there was no more ba uh, Baumgartner around Leafs get it to center and the Kings play it Rouse leaves it for Gilmore coming back the other way you think this would be the key matchup Tom Gretzky opposite Gilmore could be win the series <laughs> well Gilmore was a plus three in game one Gretzky a minus two so that gives you some indication they went to head to head a lot during the game Blake up to Warren Reichel. Eight and a half minutes to go, first period. Off the corner boards where Sylvain Lefebvre plays it, but Jitnik keeps it in. No, he doesn't. Offside's the call. 8.29 left to go in the first period. It's Gilmore and Anderson for Toronto. Donnelly for Los Angeles, and tempers are flaring. Back to the gardens in a moment. After any other serious crime, call 1-800-4-PA-TIPS. If you are considering hair transplants, then listen to what a medical hair restoration patient has to say. I didn't like looking old, is the truth. The massive loss of hair that I had made me feel 10, 15 years older. He actually removed the bald spots from my head. I was able to work the next day. I'm a happy camper. For a free consultation, please call medical hair restoration today. Dear parents, even if your car is working perfectly, it's still a dangerous place for a child who doesn't have a car seat. So through Project Safe Baby, Midas is making it easy for everyone to afford a Century car seat for just $42. Our cost. You see, Project Safe Baby isn't about making a product. Welcome back to Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto with John Davidson. I'm Tom Meese. Game two, conference finals of the Campbell Conference. L.A. Kings, Toronto Maple Leafs, Leafs leading the game 2-1 to one, and the series 1-0. And the Leafs haven't had any significant offense since they scored the second goal. L.A. now shooting Toronto 9-7. But trail. Of course, the Kings are shooting Toronto going into the third period in game one. You know what happened then. 22-1, to one, the Leafs. And they can turn it on in waves. Peter Zenzel has to McCown who winds up and the save. Another, another example of the Kings having problems in their own zone. They all end up on one side of the ice. Kelly Rudy 
Bobby's got to be wondering, hey, what's going on in front of me tonight? Uh, take a look at all the dark jerseys on the right side of the ice. Look at that. All five of them. That leaves McCowan wide open, and Kelly Rudy does a nice, gets the job done nicely by hanging on to the point shot and not letting it go. You see McSorley moves across. Both defensemen pick up the same man. Bill Berg's there in case of a rebound, but there was none. And it may be highly important for, for Kelly Rudy to make sure he really controls rebounds in this game because if his team is going to run around like they have, if there's rebounds, there's trouble. Big, big trouble. Eastwood and Carson will take the face off to the right of Rudy. Linesman Swede Knox tells Mr. Eastwood to leave, and Kent Manderville will come in. Carson wins it to the corner for McSorley. Conacher. Pat Conacher taken down by Foligno. Hunt comes back in. Kelly Rudy leaves it for Charlie Huddy. Yes, it is. Huddy to center ice over the stick of Jimmy Carson. He couldn't control it. McCown touches up icing in Los Angeles. We've had a lot of icings, particularly on the L.A. Kings here in the first period. I think Toronto, the slower pace. Toronto may enjoy it. I know Los Angeles loves the run and gun game because they think if they use their speed, Toronto won't be able to catch him. I'm not talking about Jimmy Carson now. <laughs> and Robitaille, two fine scorers, but they're not quick. Jimmy Carson has the great shot, the great release. Who was he telling us was his buddy, or he likes to watch on television, Rush? Yeah, he's a big Rush Limbaugh fan. Yeah. Jimmy Carson, uh, Mr. Conservative. Of course, his locker is on the right side of the King's room <laughs> at the Great Western Forum. And he, he dresses the, the, very conservatively. The, the, the team watching tapes of the opposition. The coach watching the Beverly Hillbillies and Carson watching Rush Limbaugh. It is a unique group of individuals. These group of L.A. Kings. Borchewski centering pass. Oh, a quick shot by Andrichuk. Surprised Rudy. And Andrichuk, luckily for Kelly Rudy, was not on the mark with that shot. Todd Gill back in the Toronto zone. Carson and Taylor trying to forecheck, but Gill gets it easily on Andrichuk. Andrichuk's pass goes to right. Oh, Marty McSorley lugs it back in. All oh, the fans boo every time McSorley touches up. Carson tries to wheel around, but Andrew Chuck's long reach breaks that up. And here comes Borchewski at center ice for the Maple Leafs. Borchewski off the board. Can he control it? Conacher holds him up, and Millen takes it away momentarily. Rouse pitching in for Toronto. Behind the net. Gilmore and Millen meet. Jitnik and Borchewski say, how do you do? In front of Dave Taylor, the only man there in the slot. Taylor at center ice. He'll dump it in, and Alexi Shitnik goes in with Ellen. Shitnik around the boards for Corey Miller. Granato can't get control of the puck, and Borchewski tries to clear. Can't do it. Miller has it. Nice backhand pass to Donnelly. Backhand shot by Donnelly's wide. Donnelly gets his own rebound. Back to Shitnik. Shitnik in front. Gilmore tries to fall on it. Penalty called by Don Koharski in front of the Toronto net. A cross-checking call. This line by far the best Los Angeles line. And Tony Granato may be the player getting the penalty. Yeah, it's a king it's penalty. It's the second penalty against Los Angeles. It's another one in the offensive zone. This line has been buzzing for the Kings. Donnelly gets the backhand that does, never does get to the net as Bob Rouse made the good play. And I think it's right in front. You'll see Granato get loose and then cross-check. Gilmore once, and he'll stay in front. He'll move again. There's another crash check, and oh my. Don Kaharski hands the penalty out for that. I can't agree. Granado had his stick held. He was trying to push Gilmore away, and Don Kaharski makes the call. 13 minutes, 27 seconds, the time of the cross checking penalty on Tony Granado. And the Leafs on the power play for the second time tonight. Doug Gilmore may have earned that penalty though with his hard work and yeah, Absolutely. We talked about Gilmore leading the playoffs and scoring. But don't forget about the defensive play. And remember, he's only 165 pounds. Dario muscles Millen, who's not any bigger, <laughs> centers the puck. Now he's got a back check. And he stopped Millen from getting into the play initially with a subtle little hook. Boy, a brilliant player. What a season. It just doesn't get any better. The Wiley veteran Gilmore also knows when to grab sticks when the referee can't. Of course, everybody tries that. He's not alone, but he's excellent at it. When, you, when you're the best player in Toronto playing for the Leafs, it's, it's kind of a, a national emblem. It's, it's unbelievable the respect you get in this country when you're the Leafs' best player. Unless you go like, to Quebec. <laughs> kind, of like, kind of like Babe Ruth was with the Yankees when they were great. Gilmore, is that's big the way he's been playing. 
Glenn Anderson in the corner. Leafs try to set up their power play. Gilmore's pass to Gill is cut off, and another penalty. McSorley goes down and draws a penalty from Glenn Anderson. Glenn Anderson went right over and signaled die to Don Kaharski. So we've got another offensive zone penalty. We're seeing a lot of it here in the first period. Anderson picked off Marty McSorley. McSorley went down, black eye and all. And the power play now becomes a four-on-four four exercise. A minute 28 still left in the penalty to Granado. And a two-minute penalty for interference on Glenn Anderson. The fans here can't believe that because in their eyes, Marty McSorley can do no right. But Marty drew the penalty that time for Barry Melrose Club. Time of the penalty, 13.59. See there, Marty McSorley. Look at his right eye. That's not dirt, friend. After, after the fight with Wendell Clark in Game One, he took some stitches, as you can obviously see there. He came out to meet the press after the game. He said, "All right, first statement. All right, get your cameras out, get close-up shots, take the snap photos, whatever you want to do, and then if anybody has any intelligent questions, fire away." And it kind of put everybody in their heels. Yeah. Well, when Marty uh, McSorley or Ken Baumgartner or somebody of that ilk speaks their mind, everybody tends to listen. Corey Miller to Donnelly behind it. Donnelly is taken down rudely, and he'll get a penalty. Jamie McCown, and he came up high from behind with a stick. And now the LA Kings will have a two-to-one power play advantage here. Will Gretzky see the ice? He's standing up on the bench waiting for orders from headquarters. I don't know if they'll get put on. Miller was hit, or Donnelly was hit from behind, no doubt. And the penalty is called. It's a roughing call, I believe. And Kaharski's trying to signal to the Leaf people that the hit was from behind. You'll see Donnelly right here has his back turned, and he got hit from behind. Let's listen to it now. Keep your ears open. That's a dangerous play. Donnelly was about four feet off the boards. His back was facing the center of the ice, and he got knocked down. So four on three, Gretzky and Robitaille have a great opportunity here to provide offense. The Leafs will go with two defensemen, one forward. Zezel, the forward, a great defensive forward and a great faceoff man. And in one minute, six seconds, unless we have something else called, the Kings will have a two-man power play for 32 seconds. So this is their chance to catch in. Kings go with three forwards, one defenseman, Zitnik. Gretzky, Curry, roll the tie. Zitnik. And that's your pairings right now. Lefebvre, Zezel, and Rouse out there for Toronto. Gretzky's pass off the stick of a Toronto defenseman. Now Yari Curry has it. Still a four-on-three advantage for Los Angeles. Gretzky, the shot. And it is, oh, it's batted just wide. Went straight up in the air from where we are. We didn't have the depth perception. I thought it was going to go over pocket. I have back. to agree with you. I thought it was, too. Nice job. Zezel now goes to the bench, and arrested Gilmore comes on for Toronto. He sights the puck. 30 seconds left in the penalty to Granado, so in 30 seconds the Kings will have a two-man advantage for a short amount of time. Two on two in the corner, trying to gain possession. Rouse does for Toronto, but not out. Jimnick, will he load and fire? Over to Gretzky. Gretzky cruising in. Curry. Jimnick, he'll take it, and it's deflected in front into the corner and over the glass into the crowd with 4.40 left in the period. And seven seconds left on the four-on-three advantage for the Kings. And Kings were trying to find a way to get Curry the, the pass, the puck for the one-time shot. And the Maple Leafs took it away from Curry, took the passing zone away in a brilliant fashion. Now, they'll they, they allow Gretzky here to get the puck, but he can't move it back to Curry. That time he does. But now, you see there, Gilmore wouldn't allow the pass back to Curry, so Zinnick took the shot, and Puff had no trouble at all with it. Gretzky with the shot that we weren't sure where it had gone and hit Robitaille, went up over top. You know, another goaltender here wearing black pads, actually both are, dark blue, black. There's been a lot of talk about maybe trying to outlaw that. The officials can't see the black puck against the black pads, and it causes problems when you get something around the goal net. Now, you compound that with the black socks of Los Angeles, and it's a problem. Doug Gilmore wins the faceoff, and he'll rag off some more time. And now you've got Granado back on. So it's a five on three for the Kings for the next 28 seconds. Five on three advantage. 
into the leaf zone. Jitnik, he's got Curry wide open. Dari Curry looks over the situation. Jitnik, Gilmore in front of him. Gretzky closes in. His pass across to Curry, intercepted by Gilmore. What a player. Again, Toronto's oh. taking away the passing lane to Curry. And Gretzky's trying to feed Curry. It's just not working. And now, in five seconds, the Leafs will get one of their players back. And it looks like they're going to kill out this penalty. Look at Gilmore and Granato going at one another behind the play back in the Leafs zone. Gilmore jabbed at Granato with a stick as he left the ice. Now it's a five-on-four power play, but only for 12 more seconds. And the fans are about ready to cheer as the Toronto Maple Leafs have done a great job killing off the majority of this penalty. McSorley's drive is wide. Shitnick will take a drive in front. It's wide. And now McCown is back on. The sides are five up. And a cheer for the Leafs and a well-deserved one. And here's McCowan breaking in. Jamie McCowan and Rooney the sprawling save. The goal is off the pegs. There's a timeout with three minutes, 25 seconds left to go on the first. They are roaring in Toronto. Imagine a new car so durable, its paint resists chips and salt and even birds. When scratched, one of its protective coatings actually seals itself. And what's more, it may never need waxing. You know something's changed when even the paint job is a work of art. Intrepid. This changes everything. How do you order a Miller Genuine Draft Light? The cold filtered light with smooth draft taste. At happy hour. One MGD light, please. Say MGD light and say no more. When life turns up the heat. Can they start the wedding without me? This shouldn't take long, honey. Nothing protects you like Degree Antiperspirant. It's body heat activated to release extra protection. Degree, your body <laughs> heat it. turns it on. <laughs> Welcome back to Maple Leaf Gardens, Toronto, with some great penalty killing. This is Yari Curry here. Wayne Gretzky's here. Let's watch if the Leafs can take away the lane across. Zidnick is on the puck. Gretzky's got the puck. Now, if we hold it here, there's Gilmore. There's Lefebvre. They're moving right across to make sure Curry doesn't get the puck. Brilliant job of penalty killing. Not only did they kill the penalty, Tom, but they had a breakaway by McCowan as he stepped out of the box. And nearly scored. And a good stick save by Rudy kept us a one-goal game. Leafs putting pressure again. Kruchinski centering pass knocked aside by Darryl Sador. Dave Ellett keeps it in for Toronto. Polino around the boards, but Mike Donner the only man there for Los Angeles. Donnelly looks to center. Corey Millen can't control it. Sador's got to go back in his own zone. Well, you're right. This Millen line has been the only effective line really in the first game and first period of the second game. The Kings are not operating with all their lines. This line is working as a line. And their speed seems to be able to generate enough to keep them going and enough to generate offense. Boy, Foligno and Donnelly saying, how do you do? As Donnelly knocked out Foligno, Foligno made a point out of searching out number 11 and paying him back on the boards. Both none the worse for wear. Granado has it at center. Tony Granado skates in. Millen cuts for the net. Jamie McCown deflects the centering attempt, and Felix Pumpback covers up with 2.27 to go here in the first period. Well, John Saunders and Jim Schoenfeld standing by for our Dodge intermission report. We've had loads of action in this first period, and Jim Schoenfeld will analyze it for you. Plus, a look back at one of the games of the year. Last night, game two in Montreal that kept everybody in the Eastern time zone up to around midnight. Oh, that was beauty. It was a great hockey game. We'll have a recap of that game. One of the different things that happened in game one in this series, we'll take a look at it. Let's go back to game. And let's talk about Tony Granado, an aggressive forward for, for the Kings. He will move across and hit number three here, Rouse with an elbow. Donnelly's there, but here's the elbow. Boom! Now, the Leaf players were so upset they got up, but they went after Donnelly, number 11, right here. <laughs> Granado escapes the wrath of the Leafs. Well, Granado phoned home, and his wife told him, you go over to Mike Donnelly, and you make sure you apologize for what you did to that guy. That's, the players had some laughs over it today. That's what you call guilt by association. Oh, well, it must have been one of these guys in the black shirt. I think they'll go get number 11. <laughs> Wendell Clark has it skip over his stink at center ice. Marty McSorley back for it. McSorley and Honey on the back line, and again the crowd boos. Loose puck at center. Wendell Clark runs into Charlie Huddy. It's a polite boo. It's not even a good boo. Yeah. yeah what do you think? Yeah, they haven't got they a good hate on it. Yeah. Thomas Sandstrom. Under two minutes to go. Warren Reichel with it. 
Michael back to Honey at the point. Crossing pass picked off by McCown. And here comes Wendell Clark. Left wing. Clark the shot. Ruby gets a glove on it. Sandstrom to the corner. Los Angeles wants a defenseman change. And Clark with a big hit on Sandstrom. Here we go. Sandstrom's going to go, I think. Yep. Well, we chronicled Thomas Sandstrom's problems with the Maple Leafs all the way back to the first meeting of the year in Los Angeles. Maybe he hasn't forgotten. I think he's frustrated that he hasn't played very much. And he has to go out and try and make something happen. And Wendell Clark, see the C on his jersey? He's the captain, and he provides leadership. And he's been brilliant in the, in the second half of the playoffs. He had some problems early with Detroit, but he has gotten it going. You see the he, he, threw the, he threw the hit on Sandstrom, and Sandstrom reacted. This is McSorley and Gilmore. They meet, they battle a little bit. Sounds tried, John, but after their battle the other night, I'm sure there's a lot of respect between those two. Actually. Oh, absolutely. Now, you see, Huddy was on the ice, not Jitnik, and the door was open to the Kings bench. They wanted a change. They wanted to get Jitnik out there. It never happened. And then after that, Wendell Clark threw the hit on Sandstrom. You try to be the initiator with the body checks, and you hope the other team reacts. Sandstrom did. He's in the box. Well, Sandstrom, two minutes for roughing in 1833, so if no goal is scored between now and the end of the period, the Kings will start the second period shorthanded. And the Leafs, of course, get a power play goal earlier in the evening by Doug Gilmore. They're one for two with a man advantage tonight. The Kings have been impotent on the power play so far in this series. Well, there's a Marty McSorley fan. You got, a, you got your jersey. That, you know, on the radio talk shows today, they weren't really vilifying McSorley. In fact, he climbed up the ladder of the top ten contenders in hockey in one show I heard. <laughs> They had uh, Probert as the champ, oh my. and McSorley, I think, is the fourth-rated contender. I don't know. If you're into that stuff, it's pretty funny. If you're not, I'll uh, just put it there for what it's worth. Maybe better than a lot of what we see in the heavyweight world these days, isn't it? Well, after Larry Holmes' exhibition the other night, you think so. Doug Gilmore breaks in. Kings uh, trying to clear the zone and do so. Andrew Chuck is out there with Miranoff, and this is Borsheski and Todd Gill. Two to one, Toronto, last minute to play in the first period. Borshevsky has it. Out to Gill, the drive. Doesn't get through to Rudy. Borshevsky. Gilmore takes a bump from McSorley. And the fans want a penalty there. Nothing doing. Hard hit on Gilmore in front. And a re rather rebound and a whistle as Kolharski lost sight here. Uh-oh. Oh, Here's Gilmore headbutt. McSorley. A headbutt by Dougie Gilmore. Oh, my goodness. Well, Kaharski was standing right there. And Gilmore losing a little focus. You can see the expression on his face. He is one upset guy. Now, Marty McSorley, I don't know if he's trying to say he's injured on the play or what. But, oh, now we've got the, the spark that may ignite the fuel spill here. McSorley works Gilmore up high. Gilmore will get hit again. He held up McSorley's stick. Now watch another one. McSorley waiting. Now you see the hit. That's a clean hit. Oh, that wasn't. Uh -oh. You saw the referee had his head turned, back turned. McSorley saw that and used the, used the right hand to punch Gilmore. Now Gilmore's hot. He is upset. Watch the headbutt by Gilmore. He'll come back in a moment after McSorley pushes and watch the headbutt. Well, I guess we're not going to see it. Well, that's Doug Gilmore disappearing into the Maple Leaf locker room. He and McSorley each get a minor penalty. Two minutes for roughing each at 19 minutes and 19 seconds. So Goharski gives him uh, two minutes each. Here's Gilmore's headbutt. There, right into the jaw. And I think Gilmore's very fortunate he only got two minutes in seeing that. You now McSorley noticed that the back of Koharski was turned, so he punched him in the mouth. I mean, you can see this is a, a, a subplot in this series mm -hmm. that's growing, it's festering. Now the booing might become a little bit louder as the game moves around. So you've got McSorley in for two, Gilmore in for two. Both have gone to their respective locker rooms with only 41 seconds left in the period. Sandstrom still has a minute 14 to serve on his two-minute minor. So right now you've got the Toronto Maple Leafs with a five on four advantage. What did John Starks get? Wasn't it 10,000? Yeah. For his headbutt? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, uh, man. I don't know. And Tanya Tucker still hasn't called Pat Burns. He can't believe it. The country music fan. He's been trying all through the playoffs. He can't get to Nashville. He's busy. <laughs> well, listen, he had his chance when they played the Blues. Branson, Missouri's only a few miles down the road. Now, he could have tried that. 
All right, five on four. The Leafs with the advantage here for the remainder of the first period. Zezel and Conacher, the faceoff to the right of Rudy. Zezel said he had a little trouble with Conacher on draws in game one. That time he won that one. He's left alone. Back to kill. Short circuited in front by the defense. Miranoff behind the net. Andrichuk. Andrichuk's pass cut off by Huddy. This is Nikolai Borchevsky to kill. Under 30 seconds left in the first period. Zezel. Miranoff will take the one timer. Getting Andrichuk in front. Blake all over him. Fans won a penalty there, but Los Angeles clears the zone. Under 15 seconds left. Time for one more rush this period by the Maple Leafs with a five on four advantage. Morshevsky into the King zone. Five seconds left. Andrichuk has it taken off his stick. Rudy has to make a save with 0.9 seconds left. Kelly Rudy knew the time on the clock. You see him look up again. He was hoping to find a way to skate up, get the puck out of the zone, and kill the clock. Now I would think Pat Burns will get Felix Potvin to the bench. Now waves him over, yes. And there'll be a six-man attack here. You see the clock winding down. His power play just not the same when Doug Gilmore's not on the ice for Toronto. Mm, you're right. And you see the puck was dropped, but Don Kaharski blew it down quickly. Now what you're going to have on the faceoff with really one second left is just a, a try and a shot on the right. faceoff. Right. Andrew Chuck's a right-handed shot. He'll try, I would think, to go to the net with a puck. I don't even know. Oh, maybe he's going to line people up there. I don't know why he'd do that. I don't think he's got enough time to win a draw back and have the shot towards the goal. Gretzky and Andrew Chuck, and that'll do it. Well, that's the end of the first period of play. The Toronto Maple Leafs on goals by Doug Gilmore and Glenn Anderson lead the LA Kings. The Kings goal by Mike Donnelly. It is two for Toronto, one for Los Angeles. We'll be back with the second period in a moment. Now let's go to the Dodge Intermission Report and John Saunders. John? All right, thanks a lot, Tom and John. 2-1, the Leafs up once again. We shouldn't be surprised. It's the fifth straight game they've had the lead after one period, sixth time in eight games. Welcome to the Dodge Intermission Report. When we come back, Jim Schoenfeld will take a look back at the first period and we'll also take a look back at the Wales Conference game number two last night between the Montreal Canadiens and the New York Islanders. We'll have more in just a moment. A nice bit of give and go here by Borshevsky. Gilmore with the goal. And Toronto leads it 2-1. to one.